All right. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Kelton. I'm with NC Tech and um, Emily Young, my colleague. Um, the two of us are um, the staff liaisons on our talent programs, including the Tech Job Expo. So we are your staff um, contacts if you've got questions. And um, one, whether you're not on uh, signed up as an employer and you're interested in participating in the Job Expo, or if you're already signed up and you have questions between now and um, the live event on October 20th. Um, we um, also have our, um, our partner, Jordan Ambers with Premier Virtual. And uh, Premier Virtual is the platform we've been using. This will be our fourth virtual Tech Job Expo since COVID. And so um, Premier Virtual has done a great job over the past 18 months with continuing to release new features um, to the platform to continue to enhance the experience for both participating employers and for the job seekers. So even if you've participated in a previous um, expo, there's some new features and stuff that we'll um, get into showing you here in just a moment. Um, for the October 20th um, event, we've got um, two dozen employers signed up. We've got several others that we anticipate um, will be signing up. So we've got some great um, companies that will be um, featured and, um, and lots of jobs. Um, we will be and have already started marketing um, pretty heavily to um, partners and in social media and um, we'll be sending out press releases and um, an outreach, continued outreach to um, draw attention to the job expo for um, those that are actively um, seeking new positions and those who might be intrigued by some of the employers that are participating and would like to learn more about them. Um, so uh, the virtual expo has worked really well um, from um, the feedback that we're getting from participants. It's a really efficient way to um, showcase your company and get some attention in the promotion we do and the opportunity to meet um, live via chat and video um, with um, lots of um, potential seekers and candidates. Um, in the, the spring of uh, 2021 was our last, uh, our last expo. We had a thousand job seekers registered and 75% of them logged in the day of the, the live event. Um, we did open the event a few days early such that seekers could go around and explore um, the booths that were ready to explore. Um, although there were no you know, recruiters participating live, it gave them an opportunity to kind of uh, navigate around a little bit and prepare themselves for the live event. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan, um, who's going to share her screen. And, um, and, I, and from the list of folks that were registered to participate today, we had um, employers, and it looked like we had some. Sorry, Michelle, I unmuted you on accident. I was trying to um, find the feedback. Could you unmute? So sorry. Got a little happy. I, yeah. I've, I hadn't touched anything and I said you were <laughs> muted. Sorry. But, um, so Jordan's gonna share her screen and she's gonna share um, uh, with you walk through um, things like how do you set up your booth? How do you add recruiters, post jobs? Um, how you can access um, the resumes for um, those that um, have registered um, and running reports um, you know, leading up to and after. Um, the job expo. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Jordan. Um, the intent for this is for it to be interactive. Um, so Jordan, if it's okay with you, if, if folks have questions along the way, um, you know, uh, if you want to um, uh, post a question in chat, we can take them that way. Um, and then, um, you know, we can address those as we're moving through different phases of the um, the platform and then we have um, until 10.15, so we're happy to 
uh, continue dialogue and questions after we've done um, the demo of the platform. So um, Jordan, thank you for participating today and for being a great partner and member of NC Tech. And um, we're excited to see some of the new features. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Jordan Ambers. I'm one of the account managers here at Premier Virtual. And today I'm going to be walking you through the platform. We're going to take a look at some logistics. Um, we're going to go over the registration process. I'm sure that most of you have registered, but if you have not yet, um, we're going to go over that so you know how to register and complete your registration. Um, we will also be reviewing the interaction um, on the day of the event so you know how to interact with the attendees that come into your room, um, how you can view their profiles, uh, take notes, etc. And we'll also be reviewing um, how you can go into your dashboard, make revisions, access training information, and then review your reporting that you'll be receiving after the event as well. So first thing that I'd like to um, go over is going to be the registration process. So everyone will have received uh, the registration page link if you are interested in participating in the event. Once you do receive this link, I would uh, recommend that you take a look at the information section. It does have some great info about the event, um, booth registration fees, and the um, um, the participating list of employers, and also some notations here um, from the host. You'll also be able to keep track um, of the event start date um, with the countdown clock, and we also have the schedule here for you. Now, once you are ready to register, you will click register to event, and you will be asked um, either to sign up or register as organization. Since I do already have an organization, it's just gonna take me right through the registration process, but all of you will be new um, to the new system. So you want to click register as organization, provide a username and password for you to um, start your registration process. Hey Jordan, can I just hop yes. in real quick and um, let, let our employers know that whoever signed up um, and completed your interest form, that person I sent the um, instructions to and only one person from every company is going to register and then that person will have the opportunity in step five to add other people to be able to log in. They'll all have their own login, but we only need one person to register your booth so it shows up. Otherwise, we'll end up with multiple booths. So I just wanted to, um, I know we have multiple people from some of our employers on, so just wanted to pop that in there. Thank you. Absolutely, and that's a great point. So yeah, we wanna make sure we don't have duplicate booths, so absolutely. Um, now, once you have provided a username and password, you'll be brought to our newly added organization setup wizard. So this is going to help you um, to add all the information that you need onto your booth. First step is going to be to add your basic information. So provide your organization name in here, um, provide your email address, um, you can add the phone number if you'd like, however, it's not mandatory, and then your first and last name. Oh, nope, now it does ask for the, pass, uh, the phone number there. Um, now, just to let you know, the phone number information is just for the host uh, purposes. It's not available on your booth anywhere um, unless you do provide it, maybe in your About Me section. Um, so that information is not available to the attendees, just so you know. Um, all, the next step is going to be the logo. So it's going to ask you to upload your logo. Um, you'll provide the image uh, sizing here, 500 by 250, and also the image file types that are accepted are JPEG and PNG. Um, so if you do have a, a PDF file or something else, make sure that it is um, converted into a PNG or a JPEG to upload. You'll do that by clicking the upload or change icon here. It'll open up your file folder for you to then be able to choose um, a logo. So I'll just use this one here. You'll notice that once you open up your logo here, you do have a zoom feature. So if it's not quite the exact size, 500 by 250, you can use the zoom feature to zoom in or zoom out to make sure that the um, image fits how you want it to fit. And you can also uh, crop the image as well. So if you wanted to move your logo in a different spot here, um, you do have the customization for that. Also, if you do zoom out a little bit um, to provide kind of a white border around your image, you can add some customization by uh, adding a background color here. You do have a full 
uh, color wheel here where you can choose that background color if you'd like to. Step number three is going to be your brief overview about your organization. So this is where your About uh, Us section will go. If you do have that information already set in your website, you can easily copy it and paste it in this section. It is an HTML formatted box, just like uh, Word is. So you can copy and paste uh, text information. You can also copy and paste photos here. Um, you can also copy and paste hyperlinks in here as well. Step four will be to add your website and your social media links. So we do have different uh, text boxes here. First one being your website. So just copy and paste your website link here. <clears throat> Next one being LinkedIn. So you'll copy and paste your LinkedIn. We also have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. So if you have all of these, great. You can copy and paste them in here. Um, once you do have information in the text boxes, I will show you in the end what the uh, attendee point of view looks like, but you will have these little icons available on your booth for attendees to click in and view that uh, web page. In addition to these text boxes here, you also have three custom links. So I like to call these like free spaces. You can add whatever you'd like here. Um, any website of your choice. So if you do have maybe your benefits page that you'd like to provide here, um, maybe even a pre-recorded welcome video that you may like to provide um, or a virtual tour of your facility, we've seen that as well. Um, you can also provide your careers page here, your direct careers page. Um, so if you want to provide that type of information, you'll just need to provide the URL on the right side and then uh, title the link on the left side. These text boxes here will actually be the icons that the attendees see. So whatever you want it to read, if this is, you know, um, uh, you know, welcome attendees so they can click on and view that welcome video. You want to make sure that the title is inviting so that they do click and view that web page. Continue to step number five. So what Emily had um, mentioned earlier, this is where you can add your additional recruiters. You'll do this by clicking add new user provide the first name, their last name, um, an email formatted um, username, and then administer a role. Now these roles are new, um, newly added to the recruiter uh, profiles. These two roles here, administrators and editors, are the same role essentially. So uh, administrators, they can add new recruiters to um, the account. They can also revise information um, on the booth. They can also um, pull the reporting and interact on the day of the event. Same thing with the editors. They can revise information, um, add additional editors uh, to the booth and pull reporting and interact on the day of the event. Now, representatives are a view only role. So if you do have users that don't necessarily need the ability to change anything on the account, you can add them as representatives. Um, they also have the ability to interact on the day of the event uh, with attendees and pull reporting. So make sure you provide a role for them. Then you want to manually set their password. There is an option to um, not manually set the password and just send an email off for them to create their own password. However, we have noticed that with some email securities, um, they do not accept the automated emails, so they may not ever receive that email to create their password. So it's easier for you to just click on manual set password, create their password, um, save changes, and um, send them the information that you had just created for them. Now you can add as many users to your account as you need to. Um, I always recommend at least three for a busy event um, so that you're not the only one trying to con um, interact with the visitors. We do not have a type of queue system within uh, the our boots. So when visitors come in, they can just come in and start talking to you right away. So you wanna make sure that you have at least some backup, at least one other person with you on the day of the event. Uh, now, step six will be to add your job vacancies. You'll click add new job, provide the job name. I'll just use this one, for example. Um, so you'll provide the job name, the location, available positions. And if you'd like to add the salary, you can use this section to do so. Um, it is an alphanumeric uh, section. So if you want to add the salary, um, how much you know per hour, per year, or if you just want to put to be determined, or you do not have to fill this information out at all. 
Next up would be the um, description here. So just like your overview section, it is HTML formatted. So you can copy and paste descriptions right from your careers page in this section. Um, you can also add photos in here for more um, customization. And step three would just be to review the information that you just added. If you need to go back, oh, we actually have three positions available instead of two. You can click the edit button and revise that information. Then select complete to make sure that your job saves there. Again, you are not li limited to how many job vacancies that you can add. Um, you can add as many as you have available. Step number seven is going to be to um, add your booth customization. So you do have different themes to choose from. I'll just zoom in here a little bit. We have 19 available themes for you. We did carry over some of the um, old themes that we had in our previous software, but if you click onto a theme now, you do have different avatars that you can switch out uh, within the platform. So each different theme has different avatars that you can choose from. Some are stagnant, uh, like this um, this uh, soldiers one, it's just the soldiers available. And I believe we have one additional one. This one does not have any avatars available, but all the others you can click in and choose uh, different avatars. Now the color section is still in development. So really all you need to worry about is the theme, the avatar, and then continuing to step number eight. Now step eight is going to be review section. Um, you wanna make sure you review the information that you've provided. You have everything um, in. If you do need to make a revision, you just click the edit button and it takes you right back to that step for you to make that revision. Now, once you've gotten to step eight, you're not done. You wanna make sure that you scroll all the way down, click continue, and then you will have successfully registered to the event. It'll let you know they're successful. So, we have seen some confusion where people get to step eight, they'll close out of it, and they're like, okay, I'm registered. Um, I can still add you at that point. If you do, you know, by accident, exit out of step eight, your information will still be in our system. I will just need to attach you to the event. Um, so once I get to the dashboard here, I'll tell you what to look for to make sure that you are fully registered to the event. Does anyone have any questions about the registration process? And if anyone does, I did have to mute some folks for background noise, just to let you know everyone's probably muted if you do have a question. Go ahead, Michelle. Jordan, where can um, where can folks see what their finished booth looks like with the social media and the tabs that they've added so they can, you know, see see that and, and um, make adjustments if they want to? So um there's not a preview section in the 2.0. Um, however, we do, as the admin, have full capability of viewing the lobby and their booth information. So if you want us to send that information to you, we can absolutely do that. Um, I'd be happy to send you a screenshot of what your booth looks like so you can go in um, and uh, take a look at what that looks like. And if you want to make any adjustments, uh, you can. So just reach out to myself, um, Michelle, or Emily, and we can provide that for you. Yeah, I know I did that um, for one of Miyoko. I think I saw you, that you're on here. And my question was going to be the same. If there was a pre preview for um, employers, but I'm happy to send a screenshot of what it looks like and then all the details you'd be able to edit. Um, and I believe Jordan can show you that just by going to your booth and making those edits. Um, so we are happy to send you the screenshots or do a quick little screen share. I'm happy to hop on a Teams and just share my screen and show y'all. Absolutely. Um, so next step after registering is going to be to go to your dashboard and you'll do that by clicking your name in the top right corner and selecting dashboard. Now it'll see here in your dashboard, the four most recent events that you have registered to will be located in your dashboard. So I only have um, this one here that's already terminated and this one that I will be participating in on the 20th. Now on the menu items here, you have on the left side, the attendee section is going to give you a master list of all attendees. So with this event and any other events that you may participate on in our platform, this is going to give you a list of all the attendees um, from visiting your booth in any event. 
Now the attendees also have a profile that they can set up now. So before in our previous software, if you were in um, you know, last year's event, they were only kind of phone, first name, last name, email address, and phone number information that you could uh, receive from them. Now they do have a complete profile that is visible. So they will have their general information. They may have a professional headshot. Um, they may have a biography about themselves, their address, their phone number, um, email address, and the position type that they're looking for. Their resume will be located in the resume section. You can download the resumes just by clicking on download here, and they will download directly to your device. They also have a video resume section that they are able to um, add to their profile, which I'll show you um, in a little bit what that looks like, but they can have a video uh, resume here that you can view. It's just them um, answering four interview type questions and recording themselves while doing so. And the next step, let me see if I can find someone that has some experience in their hair. Um, then they'll have their work experience listed under experience. Um, they can add up to 10 different work experiences or um, certifications that they do have underneath their profile. So you can view this type of information even before you look at their resume. Um, so if you want to view their experience and you say, oh, okay, they look like, you know, they'd be um, a good candidate, then you could go back and download their resume and, um, you know, view their, their information that they have here. Um, the next available menu item is going to be your events list. This is going to show you every event that you per, uh, registered to. It's going to be easily accessible for you to access this event. Uh, you can jump into the booth here. You can view the registration page. And you can also review your summary numbers uh, during the event from this section, which I'll go over once we get um, more into the interaction on the day of the event. Hey, Jordan. Yes. Are folks able to copy a booth, at least to get started with from the previous event? I know that was a question I had as well. Yes. So you, our legacy platform is still available. Um, if you still have your, your credentials from that account, you can log in, copy and paste that information. If you don't, you can let um, myself or uh, Emily or Michelle know, and we can reset those credentials for you in the, uh, the previous software um, so you can get access to that account. So they would need to copy the content. It wouldn't be able to build that booth um, here. They would still need to go through those eight steps initially and input that information. Okay. Right, yeah. Great. All right, so um, in the training tab here, you do have all the training videos available under four organizations. You have the full training video, which will review everything we're going over today. You also have how to register. So each uh, registration step here, and then you also have the dashboard navigation. So um, what we're going over now, all of your menu items, and then the recruiter booth walkthrough, which will uh, walk you through the interaction on the day of the event. So how to um, pull resumes, how to interact with attendees, how to view profiles, video chat, all that good stuff um, is in this training video as well. So if you would like a point of reference before the event, I would definitely um, review at least the first uh, second to last and last videos here for that review. We also have frequently asked questions and answers down here for you to review as well. Um, and if you were ever curious about the attendees point of view, or if you ever uh, registered to an event as an attendee, we also have the attendee training in here um, for you to view as well. In the attendee FAQs, we do have our support information here. Um, so our support email and our phone number is located here if you do need technical assistance before, during, or after the event. So we have Jordan, a couple of questions. We have, yes. we have a comment here that the dashboard looks different and um, the trainings lab or trainings tab doesn't appear. So you may be using the old software um, cause the, the, the training tab, does it say FAQ slash training and does the dashboard look exactly like this or does it look completely different? Hey, it's Miyoko here. I'm the one who made the comment. Um, mm -hmm. I just did not find it hiding under the hamburger menu. So when I found the hamburger menu in the top left, I can find it. Thank okay. You. No problem. Hamburger. It's my favorite. Um, and then we have the settings section here. 
So settings, uh, the My Organization tab is where you'll go to revise your profile. So after you've set it up in the setup wizard, uh, you can go to My Organization if you need to add information that you didn't in the setup wizard. Um, if you didn't have that information readily available or you just skipped a step, um, you can go back to My Organization. Now there are gonna be four different tabs um, as a part of your organization. So the general information can be edited by clicking Edit Organization in the top right where you can um, edit your name, the main point of contact's email address, so the person who did receive um, that, uh, that, e that the registration link, if you need to change that username, you can. The uh, about section, so the overview section, you can edit, you can also edit your logo. Again, the address section, not relevant, it does not appear on your booth. Um, and then the custom link, I'm sorry, the social media links and website text boxes here, you can edit. The user section is where you can preview all the users that you've added. Um, you can also edit a user's profile. So let's say one of your recruiters can't get logged in, they forgot their password. You can log in, you can go to their profile, click on the edit icon, their profile will open up. You can simply change a role here if they need their role to be changed. You can also edit their password from here if they need their password reset, um, and if their username needs to change or you know photo needs to be uploaded, you can revise the entire profile from here if you are an administrator or representative. I'm sorry, administrator or editor. Um, oh, let me go back here. So users, um, and you can also remove a user. So if you need to delete one, you can click that and it'll delete them from your account. And you can also add a user using the top right add user icon. The third available tab is going to be your offers. This refers to your job offers. Under job vacancies, you will have a list of all of your available jobs. If you need to revise it, you'll click edit here, remove it, just click the trash can, and to add, you will click add new job vacancy. And the fourth tab refers to your booth customization where you have your three free spaces here to add whatever websites you'd like, and you can also change your theme and avatar from here as well. The My Profile section is for your personal recruiter profile. So if you need to edit your profile, you can also do it from the user section by clicking edit on your own profile. Um, but in the profile section, there is one um, additional tab that is available here, which is the quick replies. This is where you can add your preset messages to use before the event. So um, like a greeting, something that you don't manually want to type every single time you speak with a new visitor. Um, I would recommend having a greeting in there, some qualifying questions, maybe a passage of information that you wanna make sure every attendee has. Um, and then once the event's coming to a close, if you just wanna have um, uh, like a closeout message, thanking them for visiting or registering to the booth um, and maybe some contact information um, as well. You can do that by clicking new message adding your information in the text box here. And once you have provided that, you can click Save Changes and your message will be available. Now, you can add as many as you need to. So you can see I have quite a bit here. Um, you can add as many quick replies to your uh, account as you need to. And I'll show you where you can use these uh, in the chat during the event. Notification section is just to show you what event-based notifications you should be receiving from us. These are automated. So again, if you have some tight email security, you may not be able to receive these. Um, however, once you register, you should receive a register confirmation email from us. Um, 24 hours before the event, you'll receive a reminder. Event is starting refers to the attendees. Um, so not for this particular event, but if there was early access, to an event, the attendees would be provided a reminder when that early access starts. When the event goes live, you'll receive another reminder. And then if you're late to signing in, um, if you're 10 minutes late, we will send you another reminder. So, you know, a little annoying with the notifications, but we want to make sure that you're um, informed and that you are logging in and participating in the event. So um, this is what you should be receiving from us. Now, on the day of the event, what you'll want to do is access your booth from your dashboard. So you'll look at the event that you're attending that day, click access booth, and your booth will open right up. So we're going to get a 
live. Um, we're going to get an attendee in here so we can, I can show you what that interaction looks like. And Jordan, while you're doing that, the attendee, um, when attendees log in, it looks very similar to this, right? Just it would be on their side um, where they have their chats and all that good stuff. Correct. Oh, I'm in the wrong booth. There we go. <laughs> I'm in the NC Tech booth instead of my own. All right, so once you have an attendee come in, you'll see here on the visitor side, you have active and you have show all. As soon as a visitor comes in, you'll see their first and last name. If they do have an avatar photo, which they're able to have one just like you can, you'll see their avatar photo here. Now to show that they're active in your booth, you will see a little green dot. Um, this will allow you, this will let you know that they are currently in your booth. Now the show all section is also going to show you any active visitors and any visitors that came to your booth that are not currently in your booth. So you'll still be able to reach out to those who came by, maybe you missed them, they're in a different booth. Now at that time, you can still reach out and contact those visitors. Now to start contact, you can click on their name. You can either manually type in the text box here, or you can click on select preset message, drop your greeting in, and start your conversation. So we'll have her message back. So then she sends a message and you can start your one-on-one -on -one conversation. Now, as I'm speaking with Jordan, I can click on this profile icon and view her profile. So I can look at the information she has here, her resumes, experience, all that great information. Um, I can also provide an attendee status. Now, if I'm interested in Jordan, I can mark interested. Uh, if I need to follow up, if I did schedule an interview out of the event, or if I hired her right of the, out of the event, I wanna make sure to mark these statuses. At least these two here, um, this is great information because you will have access to the, these profiles after the event. Um, and this will be a part of your reporting. If you do mark one of these two statuses, this will also be great information for the host to be able to see if there were any interviews scheduled out of the event or if there were any hired attendees. Now this information is also visible to attendees. If you want to leave a ranking, that information is not viewable to attendees. And if you want to make notations, that's also not viewable to attendees either. Um, this information is just for you to be able to view. Not even your fellow um, recruiters can view the notes that you've made on someone's profile. They can only view their notes. So if they were to see um, the same profile, it's going to open up as if there's no notes here. They would make their own notes. Um, and then when you're done, you can just exit out and return back to your conversation here. There's a question. Can you video chat with attendees during the event? Yep, that was gonna be the next thing I cover here. So I'm gonna turn off my camera here. Um, what you want to do is when you are going to send a video chat request, you wanna make sure that they are available. So you wanna ask, are you available for video chat? If they reply back yes to you, um, then you can go ahead and send that uh, video chat invitation. So you'll do that by clicking on this icon here. Now you will appear in the bottom right hand side, then the attendee will appear here in this section. So just so you guys can see, I'm going to switch over to my attendee point of view. This is what their invitation looks like. They receive this and they can either accept or decline your video chat. Once they do accept, they will be visible um, on on uh, this side here. So I'll show you. Jordan, this looks great. A lot of these um, features that she's showing you now are new. And it's pretty intuitive when you're in the platform. So I know there's a lot of clicking of buttons and everything, but when you're in the platform, it's pretty intuitive and easy to use. Um, NC Tech has our own booth. It's the help desk. 
So we have set ours up and we are also monitoring just like you all are. So we have a similar experience in, in being able to, um, you know, to manage and, and set up responses and to um, see who's visiting. Make sure I'm sharing this. Okay, so I am. All right, um, and as you can see, once you're done with your conversation here, oh, let me make sure to turn my camera back on. Uh, once you're done with your conversation here, you can easily just exit out and it'll take you right back to your conversation that you were having via chat. Now this little gears icon um, also allows you to turn off your notification sound, you can mute it. So there's a chime that comes in every time a new message comes in. So if you want to mute that, you can mute it and you will not receive the chime. The chime you can is also, very helpful. Yes, it is very helpful because if you are um, trying to do uh, different work, you know, have this up. I have four screens, I'm a little nuts. But um, if you do have, you know, multiple screens, you can have the event on one. Uh, your other business on the other, but you can still keep track of new messages that are coming in from that chime. However, some people find it annoying, so we decided to um, add that setting there. Um, now you can sure. also add your, yes. Did you see the question that popped in? Um, how, if you've got multiple rec uh, recruiters participating, how can you tell that someone else is taking lead in speaking or chatting with one visitor versus another? Um, if everyone's logged in, you know, separately as recruiters, how can you manage that? So um, what will happen since I didn't, um, I didn't start the conversation off as an attendee, so I can't really show it to you at this point, but let's say a new message comes in um, or a new attendee comes in and it'll keep saying waiting for a response until someone has picked it up. Now it does not have the name of the recruiter underneath like previously in our old platform, but you do have the ability as part of the organization to click into that visitor and you'll see who they're, um, they're speaking with here. So you'll be able to see both names, um, Jordan, she's speaking with Jordan or Sally or whomever. Um, you also have this new internal chat feature available, which allows you and all additional users within um, the organization to have a group chat with each other. So if you all want to have that conversation of, um, you know, hey, uh, Michelle, can you make sure that you greet everyone that comes in? I'll follow up behind you with some information. Um, and then, you know, you guys can kind of coordinate how you want to tackle the chat uh, within your own internal chat. That's only visible to you as an organization. So Google, they can't see what NC Tech is talking about and vice versa. So that's just between you and your users there. The attendees also cannot see your internal chat um, or any other chats that are not their own for that matter. If show all is selected, will it show all chats inside my booth? My chats, I believe only shows uh, who you have responded to, yes. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that there was a question there. Yeah, so um, uh, my chats is going to show, yes, again, all of the attendees that you are currently speaking with and then show all will show every single attendee that is having a conversation within uh, your booth. Jordan, can you move to show um, everyone about um, access to resumes and um, reporting because we're getting close to our time oh, frame yes. here. Um, Emily and I can can definitely stay on for a few more minutes um, past 1015. So if if you still have some questions, we're happy to to stay on with you. Absolutely. Okay. So once the event's over, you can click on back here and click on the manage event section. Manage event is going to open up. It's going to give you your details from the event. Um, it's going to give you, sorry, I just need to refresh the page. So it's going to give you how many attendees visited, total chats, um, attendees active, total messages, how many submitted resumes you had, how many interviews you scheduled and uh, attendees that you hired. So if you do mark those statuses, this will be available for you to view um, in your summary totals. The attendees uh, section will give you a list of all attendees that have visited. You'll also be able to view these profiles um, and also review the attendee statuses and revise your notations and things like that after the event. And in the reports tab is where you'll be able to generate your different, uh, your three reports. 
the visitors report will give you um, the list of visitors who came to your booth. So you'll have their registration information. You'll also have the chat transcripts. So you can download the chat transcripts from your organization and the resumes. Once you generate that report, you will receive um, a zip folder full of uh, uh, resumes from the visitors that came to your booth. Once you have generated those reports, they'll uh, download here and you can download them to your device just by clicking on the download arrows. Once you've downloaded them, you can remove them from the queue here um, so you don't have them just sitting here taking up space. But that's pretty much it. Does anyone have any questions? I know we don't have that much time left, but um, does anyone need for me to go back and review anything that we've gone over or just have any platform specific questions? Just reminder, Jordan, how long, is, how long is the platform available to participating employers post the live event? Um, so the event information will be available. Um, really, I would say, I think it's about 60 days after the event has taken place. Um, you'll still have that information. So as soon as you have that info, I would download it directly to your device um, so that you always, you have that information uh, downloaded directly to your device. Is there a way to request a conversation with a candidate that does not visit your booth? No, so the only attendees currently that you can reach out to have to have stopped by your booth. And I'll be sending this if y'all need to rewatch from the beginning um, later on this afternoon or if you were a few minutes later hopping on and missed the first part about setting up the booth. Um, I will send this to everyone later on. They're all looking great. Okay. <laughs> I've been looking, We've got some going. So let us know if you come up with any questions um along the way or again if you at, just pop me an email and say can you just send me the, the attendee view of my booth i can send you a couple of quick screenshots um if you just want to know to make some edits um at any time all right thank you everyone thank you, everyone. Thank you jordan